ChatGPT is at the moment the most covered AI platform. Everybody talks about it, but there's still a lot of people who are not aware that this is actually accessible for free through the internet and you can even download an application. And in this video, we want to look specifically at astronomy and astrophotography, how ChatGPT can actually help us with that. If you already know ChatGPT, it will give you some inspiration, also some tips how you can utilize it better. If you do not use ChatGPT until now, I can promise you it will blow your mind. Stay tuned. <music> Hey, this is View Into Space. I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. Now let me just start with a few surprises. The title of this YouTube video, ChatGPT created it for me. The description you find in YouTube about this video, ChatGPT did it for me. The title page that you see with the computer keyboard and a robot hand was done by another AI application called Diffusion B. So still, this is still me sitting here. But if I'm still really relevant, or if this will be my last video and the whole rest can afterwards be done with ChatGPT, we will see later in this video. So usually my mentality with new stuff like this is to actually implement it productively as soon as possible in my daily workflow. Then you see best, the pros and the cons, the strengths and the weaknesses, and you can evolve with it. Because let's be clear, ChatGPT will not go away anymore. And what it delivers at the moment is just a tiny little brink of what it can do in a year or two. And before we go to the computer and actually look at the real use cases, I wanna also give you the cons because there still are some. Number one, there's no real time data. So you wanna know when the next full moon is? ChatGPT cannot tell you. You want to know what the weather is? ChatGPT doesn't know. So that's just important to know and there are other applications to do that. Second problem, ChatGPT is heavily overloaded at the moment because everybody wants to use it. So there's a lot of times you want to log in, you simply can't because it's just on capacity. But that will pass over time. Next issue, at the moment, the cutoff date for all the content that it actually has inside is 2021. So some things are outdated. You want to know something about Blur Exterminator? Sorry, you will not find it. You want to know something about the latest camera? You will not find it. Especially in an area where development is so fast as astrophotography, that is a real issue. Once again, I'm sure this will pass with time and more and more real-time data will actually be added. Last but not least, and that's the biggest issue. A lot of stuff which ChatGPT produces is factually wrong, outright wrong. And the issue with it is that what ChatGPT produces looks so amazingly well. And a lot of data is so to the point that you might actually also believe what is wrong. So it is absolutely vital that whatever ChatGPT spits out, you take it very critically and whatever you want to utilize, you double check. So with that, let's go to the computer and I will lead you down the rabbit hole. Okay, welcome to ChatGPT. And if you see it for the first time, it looks rather unimpressive. What is important to note here is that this is the application. So a lot of people just go on a website, but there is actually an application and I will put a link in the description below. It's available for Windows and for Mac. So what is ChatGPT? In principle, it's a chat. It's just a prompt line and I can write in here anything. Tell me how to cook a chocolate cake. Okay. And here's your recipe. Now you will say you could also have that in Google. Yes, but in Google, you just get some links and then you have to continue. Here you have it nicely presented, just right for your use. And just try it out. Whatever is on top of your mind, enter it and you will get the result. But let's now go to astrophotography because that's what we're here for. And let me just blow your mind with this here. I asked Chap GPT, write me a poem about galaxies and nebulas. And so it did. So if you're more on the artistic side, fine. 
you actually will get what you're asking for. Now with that, let's go to the more serious stuff. And I thought about just astronomy and the preparation for a shooting. So let's look at this chat here. First, I state this chat is about astronomy and astrophotography. All questions should be answered with the context of observing from Basel, Switzerland. Now that's crucial because within a chat, ChatGPT remembers. So from now on, all the questions that I ask, it already knows it's about astrophotography and it already knows that it's observed from Basel, Switzerland. So what questions can I ask? For example, what star should I use best for telescope alignment? And it gives me some ideas, but not just some stars, but it actually puts it in a nice little paragraph. Now next I ask, can I recommend any attractive nebulas to photograph tonight with a 1300 focal length telescope? So it actually gives me four objects and that's on the first glance rather nice. But the Lagoon Nebula is at the moment not visible from Basel. It only actually rises at six o'clock in the morning. And you see that's where the problem starts. So for example, the Orion Nebula, head on, perfect. So you could just blindly trust this and then you have the disappointment and this has also again to do with that actually chat gpt cannot process time-wise the data so real time so in context with today's date it doesn't know what today is so you have to be careful but still it can give you some object selection but you have to double check now it gets much more interesting and also more useful when you know what object you want to shoot. For example, I still decided now on the Lagoon Nebula, just for the sake of this exercise, which wavelengths does the Lagoon Nebula emit? And it tells me nicely that it's mostly the HA and the oxygen. I can even ask how much integration time do I need to capture M8 ideally? Obviously, we know that there's a lot of things which it depends on. Still, remember up here I stated that it's 1300 millimeter focal length telescope. And now when I ask this question, look at here. For a typical DSLR camera and 1300 millimeter focal lengths, so it remembers it. And it, without that I state it, includes it in the answer and in the considerations. And I think that's really mind boggling. And so it tells me so that I need 30 minutes to an hour for a good image. Now this is really enough, different question, but still quite interesting. Okay, the next question that I asked ChatGPT in what border zone lies Bilbenk in Switzerland, so where I live? Because now that I know the object, I've actually looked into that, I want to know if I actually want to shoot from here, right? So interestingly, it gives me the right answer, portal class 4 or 5, but funny enough, it tells me that I'm living in the canton or the, or the state of St. Gallen, which is completely wrong and also should be quite easy to figure out that it's Basel London, not St. Gallen. So these are the things that I mean where you have to be careful. It's just, you know, it, it, it's so such a smooth read. And if you wouldn't know that, you would just accept that as a given. And I don't know why this happens that ChatGPT sometimes makes such strange errors. But we still have to understand, this is a research project. This is the start of it. And when you look at it from that perspective, it's crazy what it can do. So it even tells me that if you want to do astrophotography, it's recommendable to travel to a darker location where the border class is lower. So let's assume I want to do that. And I state, is there close to Basel, a border three zone? And it actually gives me good recommendations. The Ura Mountains, the Black Forest, the Alsace region. And I can go now even further. Where is a place in the Black Forest, which is a Bortel 3 zone? And it gives me now specific places. And I can now go now even further and ask for a Bortel 2 area near Basel. And it also gives me an answer, which seems to be accurate right here. Next step, I decide now I want to go to the Chasseral, which is a Bortel 2 zone. So I ask, is it possible to drive by car to the top of the Chasseral, which is mountain? And it goes to a great extent to tell me that there's a road, but it's a dangerous road and night it's closed. Absolutely blown away. I know this mountain, but all the facts that it can tell me about how to drive there, that's really, it's really mind blowing. So last but not least, I want to show you a trick. So you can simply ask, give me all the facts about M8. 
but you can have a much better answer if you tell ChatGPT as what it should act. So if I start my sentence, act as an astronomer and tell me everything you know about M8, including the history, scientific facts, unique properties, and what makes it attractive object for astrophotography, look what I get back. That is really an amazing text where it goes into all of these details. So these kind of prompts, act as an, is one of, at the moment, the most valuable tip I can give you. And I will also provide you a link where you can get these prompts from and to get more and more and more with exact texts, templates that you can then adjust for your needs. So let's go now to a different topic and that is equipment. So let's start with this question. Which cooled camera for astrophotography has a pixel size smaller than three micrometers and at least eight megapixels? So it gives me here a nice selection. And look at this here, 3.69 micrometers, but I want it below three. So that's an inaccurate answer and ChatGPT should even know that it's an inaccurate answer. So I found this quite interesting, but otherwise good list. Next. Which ASI cameras for astrophotography cover the infrared spectrum? Also here, it gives me a lot of different options, which is a good entry-level telescope for astrophotography, you could ask. You get an answer for that. It recommends the Celestron Nexstar 6SE and interestingly, the Orion Starshot. So obviously these recommendations are debatable as it would be debatable if I would give some recommendation or anybody else. But it's still interesting that it gives them. What dew protection can I use with a Celestron ADSC telescope? I found this quite interesting list, especially the dew sapper. I never heard of that. On the other side, lens cover, the Yeah, okay, but then I don't see anything anymore. So yeah, whatever. Then here's something else. How do I create flats for my astrophotos? It gives me a nice little instruction how I should do that. Explain what drizzle means in the context of astrophotography. Also here, it tells me nicely what it is. So again, you see the possibilities are limitless. Just whatever you want to ask it, just throw it in here. The last area I want to cover is software. And obviously I mostly tried it with PixInsight. What process should I use for PixInsight to sharpen the image? It recommends the multi-scale linear transform as well as the unsharp mask. How can I extract the color channels in PixInsight? It tells me the channel extraction process, but it obviously also works with other software. For example, here I ask it, tell me all about the rejection filter in AstroPixel processor, and it tells me all it knows about it. It was very useful. So let me sum chat GPT up before we go as a last thing to a little surprise. I feel that ChatGPT is really helpful in whatever aspects of your life. We're still at the very beginning. There's still many mistakes. So as long as we take whatever we see with the right amount of skepticism, that we understand that if we want to use something which ChatGPT spits out for something significant that we have to double check it, I think then it's absolutely fine. And with that, let's come to a little surprise. I want to give you a short presentation about astrophotography. So that's the title page, there is an agenda, and then we start here with the introduction to astrophotography, the selection of the equipment, proper operation of equipment, processing of acquired pictures, and the conclusion. And what this is, this is fully AI created. I just ask it to do a basic introduction in astrophotography. That's what it got back. That's another app called Tome. I will also put a link in the description below. So welcome to the world of AI. I hope that was fascinating, but also useful and that you start using chat GPT, not only for astrophotography, but for about every aspect in your life, because it really can make your life easier. I'm obviously very curious what you think about it. Please leave it in the comments below. If you want to have all the links and apps and tips and tricks mentioned in this video on a nice little PDF, please have a look at my Patreon channel where you get this amongst many more documents to download and a lot of other benefits. Link is in the description below. See you next time and clear skies.